Alan's gonna be bringing the word this morning, and it's a great, great uh, privilege to be able to introduce. So, Alan. Good morning. <clears throat> what a pleasure to be here to, to bring God's word. If you have your Bible, turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 9. And I'm going to start with this. I'm, I'm going to say that when I preach, I like to preach through stories. I, I look at the stories, and, and sometimes I, I try to imagine myself in the story. Sometimes I, I just like to read the story and just see how that applies to me. I like stories because my life is a story. Your life is a story. Stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Just like your life has a beginning, a middle, and an end. We all have a day that we were born. We're all here. Okay, we all have a day, a day that we will die. A day that we don't know that is coming, but it, it is coming. And what is in the middle is it, it makes up your story. And I, I would be willing to, to say that our stories, they, they may have similarities, but none of our stories are exactly alike. And so, so let me ask you this. What is your story? You know, in, in the story in the middle, we have many days, many events. We have sorrowful occasions. We have joyful occasions. But if you go through a story, in stories there are things that maybe we pick out as more important. And so the, the most important part of your story and my story is how we respond to Jesus. And so, so that, that most important part of our life is how we, how we respond to Jesus. That determines how we live our life. Not everybody will respond the same way to Jesus. Not, not everybody will, will follow what Jesus has to say. Not everybody will accept Him. Not everybody will like Jesus. But everybody will have to answer as how they respond to Jesus. This morning we're going to talk about an encounter with Jesus. We're going to look at this story of this, this man that was born blind. This man, he was born blind and he, he encountered Jesus and his life was changed. You and I, we have, we have this privilege that, that we can encounter Jesus every day of our life. That, that we will not physically see Jesus, but we have the Word of God. And through the Word of God, we have Jesus. And so I, I hope that, that we encounter Jesus every day. We're going to see that this man, that his life was changed forever because of his encounter. And I, I hope that your life is changed forever too because of your encounter. You're got, if you looked in the announcements, we're, you saw that we've got like 40 verses to go through. Now, in, in Pastor Eddie's sermon, that would take like forever. Um, but, but that's okay. Um, I don't think I'll go forever. Um, but if I go short, if I don't take up all the time, Pastor Eddie, you can have that time next week and you can use that to build on. Um, but so we look at this. There's this whole story. And you got to look at the whole verse, the whole verses, and look at this whole story. So we're going to, first of all, we're just going to read through 40 verses. So John chapter 9 and verse 1. And it says, As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, he said, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but the wor that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming. When no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit in the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. And he said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Says the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? 
Some said, it is he. Others say, no, it is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes open? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, anointed my eyes, and said to me, go, and wa go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. It says, they, they, brought, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, He is a man who is, a, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. And they, they said to, to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. For the Jews did not believe that he had been blind, and he had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they, and they asked him, Is this your son who you say was blind, was born blind? How then does he see? His parents answered and said, we, we know this is our son, and that he was born blind. But he now sees we do not but how he sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, the parents said, He is of age, ask him. So the second time they called the man who had been born blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, though I was blind, now I see. And he said to him, They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he said to them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they, they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, why this is amazing, an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were of, not of God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You are born in utter sin, and would, you would teach us. And they cast him out. Verse 35, it says, Jesus heard that they cast him out, and having found him, said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For the judgment came, for judgment I came to the world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of these things the Pharisees, or some of the Pharisees near him heard these things, and said, Are we also blind? Let us pray. God, we come before you, we thank you for today. God, we thank you that we can gather in your house. God, we can gather with your people. God, and I, we thank you that we can hear your word. God, I pray that as we look into your word, God, I pray that you'd open our hearts and speak to us. God, not of anything that I say, but God, that your Holy Spirit would work in our hearts. God, I pray that as we look at our encounters with you, that we would, we would look at ourselves and we would look inside and see how it affects our life. God, I pray that we would be changed for the better because of our encounters with you. God, I pray that, that our encounters with you would not lead us to be like Pharisees and be religious. But God, I pray that we would be like the blind man and God, through our, encounter with you, God, our encounters with you, that we would be able to worship you freely and truly. God, thank you for all that you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. So we, we look at this. I, I didn't give Pastor Eddie an outline, but you have on in your bulletin, there's a page on the back. If you take notes, um, I, I still have points that you can write down. 
The first thing that we see in this first part of this chapter, the first thing we see is that sometimes things happen in our lives so that God can receive glory. We look at this man and, and we see that this, this is why things happen. This has happened so that God can receive glory. And, and let me just stop right here and say that sometimes things in your life that, that are trials... We're going through the book of James in Sunday school, and, and trials can lead us to Jesus. And so sometimes the trials in your life are there so that you can be led to Jesus, so that God can receive glory from them. I know in my life that some of the things I've gone through at the time, I had no idea why. God, why is this happening to me? And, and I don't know that I, I really got an answer that, of what I wanted, but I believe that God used events and said, this is for my glory. This will be for my benefit. And so when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he says, this is for, for God's glory. So in verses 1 through 5, we see that. We see that this man was born blind. This man lived his life blind. And... and in this time, people had a mindset that if something happened to you, if you were born blind or if you had some kind of handicap, it was because maybe you sinned or your parents sinned. And so, that, so the, Jesus' disciples were discussing that. Jesus' disciples said, well, who sinned? Was it this man or his parents? And so, you know, like I said, it was a common misconception in this time that, that if anything was wrong with you that somebody sinned. And so, so Jesus challenges their mindset. Jesus said, that's not the case. Jesus said that he, he did that the man was born blind. He said, so that the works of God might be displayed. Neither this man nor his parents, neither one of them were at fault. Like I said, sometimes we go through things and we go through them so that God can receive glory. We go through things so, so there's no other explanation other than God did it. God brought me through this. God delivered me through this. God provided through this. Again, sometimes we have no clue why things happen. Sometimes we have no clue why the trials happen. But, but I believe that as we go through the trials, I believe that they are opportunities for growth. I believe that through our trials, that that is, a, uh, that is an opportunity that God can use later. I believe that that is an opportunity that God can give us a testimony. That, that God can say, look at what I did. That we can't say, look at what I did. I, I, it's not what I did. But look at what God did through this situation. But I believe that as we go through trials, and, and as I said, we talked about it in Sunday school, nobody likes trials. Nobody likes to go through trials. Nobody wants to sign up and say, I want to suffer. I want to go through these trials. But I believe that as we do, I believe that it is a way for God to work. Next, we see, first we saw that, that sometimes things happen so that that God can receive glory. The second thing we see is that, that Jesus works through our encounters. So Jesus saw this man. Verses 6 and 7. One of the things I like about the ministry of Jesus is when Jesus did things, He didn't always do things in a conventional way that, that we would think or that would make sense to us. Jesus didn't, you know, give him some eye drops and say, put these in your eyes and wait four hours and you'll be good. Jesus did things unconventionally. Again, so that I believe that Jesus could take credit so that God can receive glory. Jesus spit on the ground. Jesus made mud from his spit, and he took that mud and wiped it on the guy's eyes. I don't know about you guys, but if you guys go to an eye doctor and the eye doctor does that to your eyes, you're either going to punch the guy in the face or you're going to walk out saying that this is, this is ridiculous. But Jesus did this to this man, and he said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. And one thing I want you to see is, is that this man was obedient. Jesus said, Go wash, and this man said, Okay. And so I, I think that even in our lives, I think even the smallest thing that Jesus says, Do, I think we should look at this and we should say, Okay. 
It, it may not make sense. It, it may not you know, go with the social norm. But if Jesus says it, we need to listen. So this man was obedient. He, he went and washed in the pool of Siloam. And I, and I love that he had sight. That, that immediately he had sight, that we look at this and imagine the life that he had lived and the life that he can now live. I, I can't imagine being blind. I, I do have glasses and contacts, so I can imagine not seeing well. But imagine, imagine not having any sight for you know, 20, 30 years, and then one day that changed. Uh, imagine, imagine how your life would change because of that. That this man was, his, his whole life was he would go and, and beg for money that he could survive. That his life, that's what he did. He, he had no other way to support himself. And so imagine that, that you gain sight and now you can provide for yourself. You can work. You can, you can enjoy the, the things that, that, that God has done. Not all of you know this, but, but I am from Oklahoma. I'm from the Panhandle of Oklahoma. And one thing about the Panhandle of Oklahoma is it is flat. You can see for miles. Um, I, at night, you can see towns that are like 20, 30 miles away. But one thing about that, that flatness is those sunsets are hard to beat. Those sunsets that, that you can just look and just see God's workmanship. How amazing it is. How amazing it is just to see the works of God. And, and I, I think for me, I take a lot of things for granted that I've seen them before. I've seen God's sunsets. I've seen these things. But, but I imagine this man that not being able to see and then going to be able to see this man, he was changed. This man, he had sight. This man encountered Jesus and his life changed. Your encounter with Jesus should change you. And let me make a side note here. You shouldn't just encounter Jesus on Sundays. You, the only time you encounter Jesus should not be on Sunday when you come to church. You should encounter Jesus every day of the week when you have your own quiet time. You have your own Bible reading time. We look through the, the, the Bible and the Bible's not just a bunch of stories that somebody put together. In college, I, I went to a, a secular school. I went to a state college and one of the things that they said was, I, I, I like some of the stuff in the Bible. I, I, they, there, there's good teachings, there's good poems. But that's not just what the Bible is. There's so much more to it than that. The Bible is living and active. It's God's holy word. It's not just a bunch of good teachings. Now there are good teachings in it. And so as you go through your life... My prayer is this, is that you are different today than you were yesterday because you've read God's Word, you've encountered Jesus. First thing we saw is that sometimes things happen so that God can receive glory. The next we saw that, that Jesus works through our encounters. Is that, that, that we, 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 when we encounter Jesus, Jesus can and will work through those. Next thing we see, there's a, it, takes like a, it takes a majority of this, this chapter, is that you will, you will face opposition. As, as followers of Jesus, some, I, I don't know, sometimes I think we are blinded by living in this, this Western Christianity world. That, you know, that Christianity is soft, Christianity is feel good, Christianity is, you know, you know whatever. But I, I believe that, it, that as true followers of Jesus, I believe that we do and we will face opposition. I believe that we face this opposition because of our faith. You look through this story, and they're asking, you know, in verses 8, you know, the neighbor saw, isn't this the man that sat and was a beggar for his whole life? And some would say, yeah, it's him. In other words, I know it's just somebody that looks like him. 
And then he would stand up and say, it's me. Yeah, that's, that's me. I am that guy. I am the one that was there, and I am the one that was begging. But now I can see. Multiple times they asked him, are you this guy? They took him to the Pharisees. They took him to the religious leaders. Tell us your story. And, and I don't remember how many times through this, but several times he has to tell his story. And, I, and, and towards the end, I like how he responds to the Pharisees. Well, do you want to be Jesus' disciple? He just gets fed up with them. But, but this man, he, th that he, people are opposing him. That this, surely this didn't happen to you. What's your story here? He said, this man named Jesus made mud, put it on my eyes. I went and washed in the pool of Siloam, and now I see. He, he took his story, he took his testimony, and he told what God had done, except at this point he didn't know exactly who Jesus was. We see, you, you go through this, and you see that the Pharisees, we, we give the Pharisees a, a, a bad rap, and sometimes rightfully so, that they were, they were religion-driven, that they were driven by, by checking off lists and, and you know, do's and don'ts. That's what they were driven by. Now, this happened to, to fall on a Sabbath, and the religious people said that you can't work on a Sabbath, but Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And so the Pharisees were, were upset. And, you know, these Pharisees, they were... They were super industrious to following their religion. And so this idea of religion, you couldn't do good on this Sabbath day. As we go through this, and, and something that spoke to me in, in looking through this is, sometimes we're harsh on the Pharisees, but I think sometimes we are Pharisees. That sometimes you and I, and I, I may be projecting here, but sometimes, sometimes I, I get in the mindset of being religious that I have a bunch of do's and don'ts and a bunch of lists to check off. Did I read my Bible today? Check. Did I pray today? Check. Did I go to church? Check. And, and so sometimes I, I, I think we get in this mindset of, you know, just blindly just or just following this checklist. And so I, I, I want you to look inside and, and are you being a Pharisee? Are you being judgmental to the ones that are truly following Jesus? Are you, you know, just following a list of do's and don'ts? Maybe because that's the way it's always been. Just follow this rules and, and, and follow this checklist. Are, are you being religious just for religious sake? So these Pharisees, they go and they ask the man several times, were you born blind? What happened? And, and finally they decide, well, we're going to talk to this man's parents. They will tell us if he was born blind. And if you notice, when they, when they, when he, they talk to the parents, the parents are, are standoffish. They don't want to answer the questions. They, his parents said that, that we know that this is our son and we know that he was born blind. And they said, but how he sees, we don't know. And they said, ask him. He is of age. Speak for himself. And you look at that and you, you read through in the next few verses. They essentially were throwing their son under the bus that we don't want anything to do with this. Because that the, the Pharisees, the Jews had already said that those who who follow, would, would confess Jesus to be Christ, would be thrown out of the synagogue. I don't know about you. And just the little I know about the Jewish culture is this. For one to be involved in society meant that they had to be involved in the synagogue. For, for one to be a successful business person or, or whatever it was, they had to be involved in the synagogue. If one was kicked out of the synagogue, 
they were essentially ostracized from society. Look at this person, stay away from them, they are not like us. And so these, these parents were, we don't want anything to do with it. We don't want anything to do with it. Yes, he's our son. Yes, he was born blind. We don't know what happened. And so, so they were afraid of, of being you know, ostracized, kicked out of their social circles. And they, they, it might have meant that they did lose their job. It might mean that they would lose everything. So they were fully aware of this. Said so he's an adult. Talk to him. And as it goes through, as I mentioned before, I, you look at this, and the, the Pharisees just kept asking and kept asking. And, and, and finally, this, this man, he said, I don't know. I don't know. This man, Jesus, he did it. He healed me. If this is so much to you, why don't you be his disciples? He was taking a jab at him. If you're making such a big deal about this Jesus guy, why don't you follow him? And as the religious folks, they, they got very upset. And it says in verse 34, it says, They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us? It says, And they cast him out. So they kicked him out of the synagogue. Which kind of it brings us to our last point. Our last point is that we, we see that Jesus came that we may see. These last few verses that deals with Jesus coming back to this man. Jesus knew exactly what happened. Jesus found him after he'd been cast out. And Jesus asked him, he says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And this man, he wanted to believe. He wanted to know who the Son of Man was. Who is the Son of Man? I want to believe, but who is He? And Jesus said, It is He who you are speaking to. Jesus said, It's me. And I, and I love how the man responded. In verse 38 it says, He said, Lord, I believe. It says, And He worshipped Him. I believe that, that our encounters with Jesus brings about true worship. I believe that when we encounter Jesus and we see what He's done, I believe that there's nothing else we can do but worship. The man worshipped Jesus. I believe he knew that, that there was something special about Jesus. Jesus said, For, I came, or for judgment I came into the world, that those who do not see may see, and those who may see, or those who see may become blind. Jesus came so that you and I can receive sight. Not just the spiritual or physical sight, but the spiritual sight that we see that He is who He said He was. Jesus came, came to give light and life and sight. But He also said that, He said, I came for judgment. He says, and those that see may become blind. This idea of religion gives a false sense of sight. When you have all your, your X's crossed, your T's crossed, and your I's dotted, everything, there's this false sense of sight. This idea of religion, religion will focus on how good I am. That's what the Pharisees were focused on. Look at me. Look at what I can do. I, I, I follow all the laws. I, I even tithe out of my spice cabinet. The Pharisees were saying, look at me. But this idea of religion, it brings blindness instead of sight. Religion cannot save you. Coming to church week after week after week after week cannot and will not save you. Reading your Bible cannot and will not save you. Hard thing to say is you are not good enough to save yourself. 
Jesus and Jesus alone is the only one who can save you. Jesus is the only one who can give you sight. So where does that leave us today? I've been up here 30 minutes. Where does that leave us? What do you say about your encounter with Jesus? You and I each, we all encounter Jesus. This morning I've read to you and preached to you about the story of Jesus. So you have encountered Jesus today. And here's my question. Are you different because of your encounter? So many times it's, it's, sometimes it's easier just to be religious about it. So many times it's easy just to say, well, I'm just going to check off my list. But when we do that, we're depending on ourselves. When we, when we follow religion instead of Jesus, we're looking for our own sight. We're looking for our own salvation. We're looking for a way to do it ourselves. So let me ask you this. Has your encounters with Jesus, I, I've seen you guys, you know, we've been here coming here since January, and so I've seen most of you since then. And I would say since I've been coming here, I know that we have encountered Jesus. So has that encounter with Jesus brought you light? Has that encounter with Jesus brought you salvation? Has your encounter with Jesus brought you a deeper change? Let me ask you this, a hard question is, is there, do people see this change in you? Do people see that you are changed because of the gospel, because of the good news? I said you stand, I'm going to pray. And I, I just want you to take time and I want you to think about this. I want you to respond how God is calling you to respond. I'm going to pray. God, we thank you for today. God, thank you so much for our encounters with you. Thank you that you love us and you care for us. God, thank you that you can and you will give us light and you will give us sight. God, I pray that as we close today, God, I pray that, God, maybe we will look inside. God, do we know you? Do we love you? God, have you changed our lives? Have you changed my life? God, thank you that we have your word. Thank you that we have encounters with you. Thank you, God, that you don't leave us where we are, but you take us and you change us. We ask all this in your name. Amen.